Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hi there, welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. We're on the couch with a new friend we're meeting for the first time today, Lynn Monahan a lieutenant with the Ashland Fire Department. Delighted to be here. Yeah, Thanks, for absolutely. Me. And a lot of other good stuff about <laughs> yeah. you. And, yeah. and, and, and you hang out with our producer. I yeah, know. Oh, tell that, the stories on Mike. That is true. I can't. We're sworn to secrecy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sworn to secrecy. You'd have to kill us if you Yes, the Ashland Fire Department. We can really on that. <laughs> I do. I do work with Mike Taroj, and he's one of our uh, wonderful dispatchers on the fire department. So you know, you don't have an accent, but you're not from here. I am not from here. Yeah, if we talk long enough, or if we have a couple of cocktails, uh, you, might, oh, okay. you might start to hear the the accent coming out, the brogue coming out. Ooh, yeah. 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 So yeah. we're, we're out. so tell us where you're from. I'm originally from Dublin, Ireland. Mm -hmm. No, there I came out. Dublin. Yeah. <laughs> I I uh, grew up there and uh, left when I was 18 when I finished high school and came over here to greener pastures where there was plenty of work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, wow. I haven't looked back ever since. So when did you become a firefighter or get, get into the... F yeah, I kind of fell, accidentally fell into uh, the fire service. I, fire service. I had my own mm -hmm. house cleaning business. Mm -hmm. <coughs> wow. And one of my clients had uh, a daughter that had a head injury. Um, she was an adult person and she was prone to having seizures. And uh, I befriended her and I was around her a couple of times when she had those seizures and I was fascinated by it and thought, boy, this is, uh, I, I seemed to be pretty comfortable when she would have them. I wouldn't get nervous. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, maybe I should look into this mm -hmm. uh, EMS stuff. So I took an EMT class mm -hmm. and got my certification. And at that time I was moving from Framingham to Ashland. And so I had this certification and thought, well, now I need to get a little bit of experience. So I went down to the fire station, knocked on the door, and uh, said, hey, I'm looking for some practice here. And mm -hmm. they sent me over to the other station. We have two stations in Ashland, uh, one where the firefighters are, and then the second one is where the, uh, the line officers and the uh, administration is, mm -hmm. and the chief. So I met with the chief th at that time, and uh, he said, well, we don't take volunteers, but we take part-time and full-time firefighters. So if you'd like to join the force in the part-time, status would be happy to have you so he handed me a pager <laughs> and said when this goes off come in <laughs> so it went off once it went off twice it went off three times and then i finally worked up the courage to show up show my <laughs> face <laughs> it was a little intimidating yeah at first, so but it was just on the spot like that without yeah. So yeah, so the, when I started to show up, uh, mm -hmm. the, the guys uh, started to get to know me. Mm -hmm. I started to get to know them. Uh, and back then, it was, it was a little different. The training was kind of like hands-on, mm -hmm. on the spot. That's mm -hmm. how you learned. Uh, so the more times I responded in, um, the more I learned and the more interest I got on the fire side of it. Because mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Ashland, we do both the, the ambulance and the fire right. service. Mm -hmm. um, so I started taking classes at the Mass Fire Academy. And it's still, it's very yeah, close. Yeah, yeah so I, I, and that really helped me when I w was responding. So uh, it, I had an opportunity to go through the, the Recruit Academy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, then a full-time position came available. I was almost four years on the call department. And then a full-time position, we had a, somebody retire, mm -hmm. and I interviewed for that position and was lucky to get assigned uh, the position. Cool. So, so that's that interesting. Your, tra your journey to fire service was through emergency services, yes. not firefighting. So no, I yes. Saying, oh, yeah. Yeah. And I had no I, I, yeah. you know, growing up in Ireland, um, the fire service, the fire brigade is a little bit different. Uh, the fire brigade just deals with the fires, and then mm -hmm. the ambulance comes out of the hospitals. Mm -hmm. That's the ambulance right. service comes mm -hmm. out, of, is assigned there, the part of the emergency room in the hospitals. So oh. I, uh, I, was, I, I wasn't aware of how they did it here in, in America. And I think it, it varies, because awesome. once upon a time, I know way back when, um, in the town I grew up in, the ambulance was part of the hospital. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and it may have morphed and changed. Yes. but but um. yeah. So it uh, so I joined the the call department in 1994, mm -hmm. and then I joined. I got uh, full time in '97, and mm -hmm. I was the first female in Ashland oh to get God. hired. Wow. So that was that was uh, that was big. Uh, mm -hmm. It was it was big for everybody. I right. mean, it was a transition for. 
uh, the whole department. Sure. The guys were great because they, they knew me. They knew me for four years, mm -hmm. so they knew what I was capable of doing. So it, the transition uh, seemed like it was seamless to me. Excellent. Uh, a couple of little things. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's, that's all, it's all good. I, I have mm -hmm. to say that, that you know, I, I was very, very lucky uh, with, with everybody on the department. They were so supportive mm -hmm. that it, they made... You're an officer. You're a lieutenant. Yes, correct. Yes, yeah, so you've risen the ranks, got yeah. earned the but respect. But that led you to create something very to unique. inspire young women yes. that has now been recognized not just in the state but almost na I think nationally now yes. it's been recognized nationally yeah. and why don't you share a bit about that I mean I know because yeah. we've personally been affected by it but yeah so when I became an officer eight years ago I started uh, taking some leadership courses mm -hmm. and I went to uh, I went down to uh, Chicago one summer for uh, a weekend it was the International Women of Fire and EMS they meet mm -hmm. every year and they, ha they do uh, like a three-day um, conference mm -hmm. and they have, uh, you know, women coming in from all, all over the United States uh, that are firefighters and some of them, you know, run seminars and give lectures. So one of the seminars that I attended was on fire camps and I had no idea. I thought they were talking about, you know, camps that you go into the woods and they mm. were going to talk about wildland fires. <laughs> and I, what I realized very quickly was uh, the, they were going to talk about these fire camps that were designed to encourage and increase the percentage of young women coming into the fire service. Because at that time, uh, about eight years ago, the percentage of women compared to men was only two and a half percent. Oh, right. So I can imagine. they were trying to figure out w why. Yeah, why is why that? We should have 50 percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and it's not that the opportunities are not, are no. not there. They are there. So they they were thinking that you know. Maybe it's the environment, maybe it's the initial environment, because mm -hmm. I have to say that I was a little intimidated walking mm -hmm. through the doors mm -hmm. as the first female. Um, but like I said, the guys were very, very good with me, but not every firehouse is that way. Right. So they decided that, well, let's, let's figure out something. Let's create these camps where uh, the, the primary mentorship are female firefighters. Mm -hmm. The instructors are female firefighters, they're co career professional women. And we'll bring in these these teenage girls and make it like a safe, fun environment for them to learn all about firefighting and EMS. Mm. And maybe this way, you know, they can transition from teenagers. And if they like it, then then hopefully the transition can be easier for mm -hmm. them to go from teenagers that are in, kind of interested in, in something to, well, I could really do this. And they're, right. they're looking at professional women that are already on the job, mm -hmm. making mm -hmm. it happen. So, uh, so I'm like. We don't have anything like that in Massachusetts that I know of. Right. And I'm like, I could do that. <laughs> Why not? So I came back and I, I designed something. I pitched it to the chief at the time, Chief Key, and he loved the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so he pitched it to the town manager, and they, everybody was on board. So, um, so sev this is our seventh year of, so of running the camp. So did you name it Camp Bailout? Camp Bailout program. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a program that runs Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. uh, one week in July. And we open it up to girls, not only from Ashland, but to local yeah. communities. Mm -hmm. My daughter was in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And What's you know, the age group? What the age group is, is anywhere from 14 to 21. So yeah, yeah Melissa yeah, I would say eighth grade to like junior high, was yeah. like, a, like junior year in high school. Okay. But the, um, you, Lynn says that, you know, it's safe and it's fun. I don't think she added in the part. That it's actually hard. It's, it's really, hard work. it's really hard, and it's really, really challenging. Yeah. And they give the girls some very, very cool, unique experiences, yeah. um, like when you took them out by Logan and things yeah. like that. So yeah. So what I what I started <laughs> off doing when I designed the camp, it was all about firefighting. It was all about EMS. That's that was the structure that I was going for. But as the years went by, I realized that the girls that came, that they were they were looking more for. Uh, you know, team events. They were, mm -hmm. they were they wanted to bond with the other girls, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted some of these girls, the leaders, to step forward. I wanted to see who the leaders of of the group were. Mm -hmm. So I started bringing in f professional women from all different uh, jobs. Mm -hmm. yeah, Life flight came down, and we had a nurse talk mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. We had a mm -hmm. pilot, female pilot. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one of our female officers from Ashland come in and talk to the girls. Mm -hmm. 
So it, 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 I realized that, you know, I wanted to expose the girls not only to fire and EMS, but to professional women that are out there getting it done. Right. You know, women that they, the professions that maybe they wouldn't think that, oh, I couldn't non Non-traditional roles, not right. Like, so mm -hmm. I bring these women in, and they see it. They see it right in front of them. These are right. women that are getting it done. If yeah. they can do it, then I can do it. <laughs> So it, it shifted a little bit from, uh, I still do the fire and EMS, that's sure. the primary, but we, uh, we, tried, we, we tend to take a couple of road trips. One year we went into, um, into Boston to uh, the fire department, the Boston Fire mm -hmm. Department, mm -hmm. and they accommodated us in there, and it was fantastic, to Logan, mm -hmm. the, the, the fire department in Logan Airport, right, so they right. got to see all of that. Mm -hmm. And last year... They uh, went on the boat there, too. Uh, yeah, they, w they got to go Ooh. on the boat, the, mm -hmm. the fire boat. Yeah, so it was, cool. it was a fantastic uh, experience, yeah. So they do a whole day of rappelling, because we have a, a training tower yeah. at the Ashland Fire Department, so mm -hmm. they learn how to rappel, which gives them a tremendous well, amount of confidence, confidence yeah. with themselves. Was that <coughs> tower built just for Camp Halo? No, no, mm. that, that's being built for a while. That's for, uh, that's for our department, but also surrounding communities can come in and, and train. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like really a big great. three, four story building. Yeah. But it's, and a, they, but it's a square yeah. block tower, <laughs> yeah. and they yeah. jump out of it, basically. <laughs> Yeah, so what we, what we do is we try to challenge the girls. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know they, they come in the first day, they're very shy, uh, and, and by day five they're like kicking and screaming, they're having a great time, they've bonded <laughs> with each other, and they have this renewed uh, confidence about yes. themselves. And mm -hmm. that's probably the best uh, feeling that I get, the, mo the, the most rewarding part of, of uh, me designing the program and seeing these girls when they leave. We have a little graduation on, on the last day. The mm -hmm. parents get, get to come in and see. We make a video. Uh, Mike uh, helps me with that. He pretty much does it all. We take pictures each day of the mm -hmm. girls. We put it together and put a video together uh. so that the parents can see just exactly what the girls have been doing yeah. for the last five days. And a lot of the parents are like, wow, wow. Yeah. I can't believe yeah. that's yeah. my daughter. I mean, that's so great. One day last year, was it Channel 5? It was some major network was there yeah. when the kids were there. Yeah, we had Channel Channel 4, it hit yeah. AP and then it just skyrocketed. So yeah. um, we, we had a lot of uh, activity last year from the media, which, Ooh. you know, is good and bad because <laughs> it kind of gets in the way of the training, you know, but the girls had a great time. They interviewed a whole bunch of them and it, it, it got the word out there, which is the so most important So are you thing. oversubscribed every year? I got to believe people eat. no you 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 know what it is it's 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 a tough age mm. it really is I mean you're talking about teenage girls mm -hmm. and unless they're kind of I don't know really outdoorsy yeah, and kind of it, oriented it's it's tough you know I think what what really happens is the parents the parents hear mm -hmm. about right. it yeah and right like, right oh, my daughter would love this. that or my, yeah. Yeah, my daughter so would the, love that like it's I mean I heard about it through Mike yeah. a few years right. ago yeah. but it was it's kind of been this like quiet jam but, but as we've posted it up on Real Housewives mm. It's more this year when the flyer came out. Sure. Um, you know, Chris, a, a couple other people have like a lot of interest, but then people are like, my daughter was there too, and my daughter was there. Yeah. And then I'd ask Melissa, like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> you know, I know Stacy Spy's daughter, I know right. Christine's daughter, that, that kind of thing. So that Is the program uh, just here, or just one program, or has it grown a bit? Oh, the no, the, the, the camps getting? are now uh, nationwide. When I, <laughs> okay. seven years ago, when I went to that seminar, um, like uh, Arizona had one, like the big, uh, uh, Chicago already had one, but there was none in Massachusetts. I the closest see. one was New Hampshire. Okay. New Hampshire had one. So I don't know of any other yet in Massachusetts. Really? So is yeah. it nationally called Camp Bailout? No, or is that your they're all different. Oh, you know, okay, each gotcha. each camp mm -hmm. calls it something, something different. Else. Yeah, I, I tailor to the I came community. Up with that, that That's clever. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> One of the things that um, Lynn hasn't shared too is that the camp is free. The camp is done for free. And the kids actually write an essay to be able to go, and they explain a bit about themselves. So Lynn gets a chance to know who each kid is before they come in. Wow. Um, they treat them, like, very well. I mean, that when they first get there, they have little cinch bags, and they have water bottles, and T-shirts all done up for them. Mm -hmm. They bring the lunch. And then when they leave that last day, you know, Melissa did half a year the first year in the week, and then she did the whole week last year. Um, they're in tears leaving these friends and like Melissa oh. like hugging Lynn goodbye. Yeah. But it's uh. a major bonding, but there is like an application process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that the yeah, as we get busier, unfortunately, the facility we can only, and, and my staff are all volunteer mm -hmm. uh, women, professional women firefighters, so uh, I, I'm limited to the amount of girls I can, I can pick and choose. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and usually I haven't. 
for the program? One year we had uh, about 22. So and that was that was too much. That was just it overwhelmed my mm -hmm. staff and uh, myself and the facilities. So I, I like 16 is a good mm. amount. Mm -hmm. But the problem is is that it's it's designed for one time, mm -hmm. but these girls want to keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. And it's and now I'm running into problems where I, I you know, I have to make stipulations mm -hmm. too. I have to allow because the the town funds it. Um, okay. and, and it allows it to be free, mm -hmm. like Michelle said. Uh, I have to take, you know, the requirements are the Ashland girls first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. first timers right. second. Okay. So, uh, but believe it or not, <laughs> I only have six applications so far. It seems mm -hmm. like the kids don't oh, think about change. it till they get out of school, <laughs> yeah, and then right. I get inundated. Right. Right. Yeah, you. yeah. So we'll see. Well, this and I know Mike will have up on the show next week the um, the flyer and how yeah. to contact you and everything sure. like that. Sure. Sure. Um, since he's I would in. love to see every town's fire department do this yeah. in the state. I, I just feel like this is <laughs> it's a tremendous a amount of work. I'm sure I am is, very, very blessed still <laughs> to have the support not only of the town manager and his staff, but the fire chief. I mean we take over the, the station mm -hmm. with these yeah. with teenage girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little crazy. Now have you ever had the camp and then that same week had to respond to an emergency. And I don't. I take myself out of service. Yeah, yeah. but, I, but, but do they see you're at the station? Have yeah. they ever been oh, around? They, oh, yes. Yeah, that that station is they manned. They see the action. So they see the action. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. they do. Yeah. But we, uh, we, we do... Uh, like, like Michelle said, we do a lot of other Darlene. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey. I'm calling you. You're like people yeah. <laughs> So we do a lot of other stuff. Like we do both operations, the mm -hmm. repelling. So there's a lot of aspects to firefighting. It's not just firefighting. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Firefighting right, right. is now a, a hugely diverse position. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to, especially in Ashland and Hopkinton, because we've got the two state parks. Right. Yes. So we, we have to learn both operations. Right. Most mm -hmm. of us are paramedics. Mm -hmm. uh, firefighting skills it has advanced to technical rescue, find space repelling so we get we introduce wow. the girls to all of that because they wow. get to use our equipment mm -hmm. so Good. i bring them out in the, in the water they get to they get to use the boats they take so turns driving the boat yeah, they yeah. take turns jumping out and having to rescue each other yeah wow. yeah so it's, it, it is fun cutting up the cars we bring a car in and they get to use the jaws of life, jaws of life. isn't that 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 you too. get to use the jaws yeah. of oh, life they get that would be a selling point right they, there they, they, get, to, they get to use uh, extinguishers yeah. so it's it's you know, the, the camp is not about the girls sitting there and listening to people talk. No. It's about them getting their hands really on the equipment hands on. and using it. So do, that's so do they wear yeah. gear yeah. so they feel yeah, I have to be careful because of the time of year. I have it I have it in July. So, so it's it and hot. it has been hot every single year. Mm -hmm. So what we do is if they're around the equipment, they have to at least have their the bunker pants on, a helmet and gloves. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I try not to have them wear the jacket unless they're 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 putting the air pack on, the yeah. SCBA air pack on. But mm -hmm. Um, we, we try to stay away from that. It's we we don't want hot, anybody yeah. to get hurt. I mean, we st we want to keep everybody safe, especially at that time of year. It's very yeah. very easy to get dehydrated in our in our fire gear. It doesn't yeah. take much. Even for the professionals, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Mean, it's a dangerous absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So we try to we try to keep them out of it as much as possible. But mm -hmm. um, obviously, if, if they're using heavy equipment, they have to be safe. Yeah. So. Now, have your kids showed any interest? I don't have any kids. I have okay. dogs. And, and <laughs> you have dogs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Lynn, do you live in Ashland or Hopkins? Or where, where? I just, uh, I just, I was in Medway and mm -hmm. I'm moving back to Ashland. Oh, very yeah, cool. very ah, excited nice about it. I lived, I lived mm -hmm. in Ashland uh, about 15 years ago and then mm -hmm. I, I moved to Medway. So, I'm very excited about coming back to town, ah. the town that I, I work in and have uh, committed my myself and my career to, so it's, okay, it's exciting. So yeah. Very so cool. if there was a call in Ashland, how long did it take you to get there from Medway? Um, well, I usually wouldn't respond to that call. Right. Uh, uh, what I would do is, if they needed extra coverage, mm -hmm. uh, I would come in on that. So that wouldn't be in an emergency. I wouldn't use any kind of uh, yeah, excessive speed. I would just drive. It would take me about twenty minutes to get but, in. So back up. So earlier, before the show started taping, you were explaining how you are responsible for a day shift. Yes. Um, so maybe talk about that and how that yeah, the structure of the sure. Place. The, the the structure of uh, Ashland Fire Department and every every department's different. As as you you go go closer to the city and the bigger departments, they have much more manpower and so they have much more structure, rank mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. uh, in the little town of Ashland, we have <laughs> a fire chief. 
that's in charge of the department, and then his second in charge is a captain. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they, we have four groups of four firefighters. Uh, three of the firefighters, uh, mo mostly paramedics, and then a shift officer. Mm -hmm. So that shift officer is like the manager for the day. They run the shift. And those are the lieutenants? The lieutenants. So we, we currently we have our own vehicle that mm -hmm. we respond in and the firefighters. The firefighters are at station one mm -hmm. and the officer is at the Cedar Street station, fire station. And we have our own vehicle that we respond in. And we meet, so whatever, whether it's a medical or it's a fire call, uh, we, res we meet the crew mm -hmm. there and uh, we, we take charge of the scene and if it's anything that's extensive, the captain and the chief will come and, and take over. So uh, as the shift officer, we manage the crew uh, and then everything that goes along with that, uh, administrative-wise, filling shifts, you know, making sure everybody's safe. Um, but we, we luckily, the, the town has approved uh, another, another four firefighters okay. mm -hmm. so we're, we're getting an additional firefighter per shift and this this believe it or not one firefighter makes a huge difference in the town of Ashland mm -hmm. what we're able to do now is man boat stations mm -hmm. so I'm actually going to get out of my car and get into a fire engine uh -huh. with, with another firefighter another mm -hmm. two firefighters so I'll be responding so the community ha now has more people responding it's mm -hmm. not only is it safer for the, the town it's it's as a manager it's safer from my crew because mm -hmm. you have extra people, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So it's it's it feels good. Now, do you always have the same crew working on your shift, I or do. do the people change amongst? No, I I I the same. The uh, same? I'm, I'm group three. Okay. So we have four <laughs> groups, and every group is assigned a number. Uh, that's why I'm L three. I'm got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are also assigned a dispatcher, and that's what Mike works. He is uh, the dispatcher is assigned to, to the the crew that they work. So they also work 24 so hours. So Mike's on group three? Mike's on group four. He so followed, your group. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not in my group. I my friend from high school is on one of the groups. Um, Mike's safe. No bad um, stories. <laughs> <laughs> David Irusi. David Irusi is L1. He's, he's on yeah. group one. Yeah. And stuff yeah. like that. Wow. So, yeah. She grew up in Ashland. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she knows all your people. Ashland, as you, as you folks know, is just like Hopkinton. It's expanding. Mm -hmm. like unbelievable. Yeah. 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 We can't keep up with the call volume and the amount of people that are. Yeah. And I, th I mean, I think Andrew, Ashland's responded almost ahead of the game that Hopkinton has, where the Cedar Street also is a full service station, mm -hmm. where, you know, we have that little Woodville as our secondary station. But this is. Uh, the, this also accommodates all the build out that's happened with Fafford and everything else on that side of town yeah. and Ashland that we haven't quite gotten to that point here, yeah. but hopefully. How long have you been a lieutenant? Eight years. Eight years, wow. I've been on the department for 24 years. What a career. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you, I, I was doing the math when you said you started. It was like, oh, yeah, that is 24 years. Yeah. Time flies when you're having fun. I love it. Yeah. I, I love going to work. And I, I never really, I mean, I. I I was a little tentative uh, about, you know, becoming a shift officer, but mm -hmm. I, I have to say that I, I love it. Absolutely love it. I love taking care of my guys, mm. and I got a, a fantastic group of mm -hmm. guys that work with me. Uh, I'm blessed. I really am. So blessed. you've used the reference guys a few times. Yeah. Are there other women now on the Ashland department? We did have another female, but she she has retired. Mm -hmm. So she uh, she has, has retired. So I'm back to being the only female again. Ah. So they're all the guys. So we can hire a couple more. Yeah. Hopefully, I can get a couple of Camp Bailout. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Camp Bailout graduates. Yes. You know, as we're getting closer to winding out, that I wanted to point out is when you said they're all volunteers that come yeah. in. Th these are all professional women volunteers. They give up their vacation time to do this. Yeah, oh, to do the camp. Yeah. To yeah. do the camp, and that's, yeah. uh, that's I can't speak enough about. Uh, I, um, I designed the program, but the program would not go on every year if I didn't have the support that I have. Mm -hmm. And the biggest support system I have are the ladies that come and help me. And mm -hmm. it, I have a core group of ladies that come back every year. And like Darlene said, they volunteer their time. Uh, for that, those five days. And so they must be coming from other towns and places. I've you got, know, I've got of, a yeah. young, Sarah young lady that come has been on the show from Hawking. Right. Yeah, Sarah which is our only woman firefighter. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I have as far out as Cambridge. Wow. I have one of the Cambridge firefighters that comes. Really? She helps me and gives me five days, and Great. they love mm -hmm. it. They're they're so into it, uh, just like they're so passionate about it. It's yeah. gonna be good bonding for. Oh, it's them. great. You, you it's guys great. as well. It's great. It's fantastic because, you know, as females in this job, you're surrounded by men. Yeah. So it's it's fantastic mm -hmm. for us to get together and 
We yeah. try to get together a couple of times a year and, and have a couple of yeah cocktails and catch up <laughs> with, with everything, you know. <laughs> so it's it, it definitely feels good. It's it's a uh, it's a wonderful wonderful you have experience. To join us. One of our girls nights. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> yes, indeed. But what you know, it's just a wonderful thing that you're doing. I mean, as a leader, as a role model, and starting this camp bailout in Ashland, and and bringing women to to even be aware of these yeah. career opportunities. Sure. Yeah, it's Absolutely. really an amazing and you thing. Recently, got a fairly major award, right? I was nominated for the Athena Award. Oh, oh. Yeah. Congra so congratulations. that was congratulations. Yeah, that, that was absolutely. Uh, that came out of left field. I had no idea. First of all, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't know anything about the Athena Award. I was going to tell us a little bit more it. about the Athena Award. Well, the Athena Award is designed to uh, to recognize uh, female leadership. leadership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, there was there was probably about I I heard about it. The town manager talked to me about it, but, but I actually got the nod from one of our older town managers, John Petram, mm -hmm. uh, who has since is is gone to uh, Burlington, I believe. Mm -hmm. So. They both nominate, they threw my name into the hat. Wow. And, uh, you know, even though you throw your name into the hat doesn't mean that you're going to get nominated. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I was happened to be picked. So uh, I had the opportunity to go uh, to a luncheon as one of the nominees. I believe there was about, uh, half, there was about a dozen of the nominees. Mm. And I felt, uh, you know, a little bit like the goat amongst the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, those professional, those those women were truly professional. Yeah, but it was a, it was an honor to be nominated. Well, but you you're a leader. Yes, you were you're a leader, leader and well it was fantastic. deserving yeah. of a nomination. Absolutely, so it, was it was fun. It was fun. Congratulations. Wow. Oh. Time flies. <laughs> it really I know. does. It really does. Out, so it's yeah. time for people to apply. Yeah, to camp get those out. applications out quickly. Summer concerts are hitting. The yeah. common concerts um, in the common. That, um, this very night, there's <coughs> one at HCA that's JP and Friends, which kicks off their summer series. Mm -hmm. And um, Got Farmer's Market, Market is open. open. We'll have music on the commons yeah. this summer. So have fun, so everybody. Yeah. Parade and All uh, right, up to July 4th. <laughs> All right, thank that's, you for yeah, joining us. Oh, thanks very Cheers. much, ladies. Cheers. I appreciate it. Us. Thanks for joining us out there. See you next time. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Possibility. It starts early, before we even know what it is. Thanks to people who make it happen. Together, we are possibility.